everybody, my name is Joe Varner, and in this short video, I am going to teach you a little bit about how to identify pikas and to distinguish them from other species that you may encounter in the Pacific Northwest. One of the most key identifying features of pikas is their size, their shape, and the fact that they don't have a visible tail. So pikas are about the size and shape of a russet potato, and they have large, round, Mickey Mouse-shaped ears. In addition, Unlike most other small mammals that you might see in pika habitat, pikas don't have a visible tail. And so if you see a species running around with a tail, it's definitely not a pika. The kinds of habitat where you're most likely to find pikas are rock slides and boulder fields, which we call talus. And the size of the rocks in the rock slide is really important for pikas. So you'll see that the rock slide where I'm sitting in here, the average size of the rocks is somewhere between about the size of a basketball to the size of a microwave. And what that does is it provides pikas with enough structure and hidey holes that they can get away from predators, but the holes are not so big that they are sort of out in the open. One way that you can identify pikas is by seeing them, and most often this will be by seeing just movement in the talus. It really helps to have a set of binoculars that you can use to then confirm that what you saw was actually a pika and not a chipmunk or a golden mantle ground squirrel, which we'll talk about more in a moment. In addition, you can also identify pikas from their characteristic calls, which sound a little bit like a dog squeak toy. <coughs> When you hear a call, it helps to use your binoculars to scan the area of the talus where you hear the call and look for movement to see if you can confirm that you saw a pika. Pikas make both short calls and long calls. The long calls are typically only made by males, and although we don't necessarily know the function of the long call, it could be in attracting a mate or defending a territory. Pikas will oftentimes call right when you arrive at a site, so it's important when you arrive at a patch of talus to listen carefully and try not to make too much noise so that you can hear the pikas if they're calling to warn others of your presence. Sometimes the way that you'll actually notice a pika is by seeing a piece of vegetation move across the talus, and if you look closely, you might actually be able to see the pika carrying this food. What they're doing oftentimes is constructing a winter food cache and collecting plants during the summer when vegetation is available that will help sustain them through the winter when their habitat may be under snow. All right, I've just found a really nice big old hay pile that has some fresh clippings in it. I'm going to show it to you. Um, keep in mind that in the Columbia River Gorge that not all animals actually make a hay pile and the ones that do make a hay pile they aren't quite as big or as conspicuous as in more typical habitat like this spot that I'm on in western Colorado. So what you can see here is that there's a whole bunch of plant material underneath this rock. Um, pikas tend to build their hay piles under the biggest rocks in the area. And if I actually reach in and pull some of this out, what you can see is that there are actually some fresh green grasses that are from this year. Um, this indicates that this animal has already started haying. And we can also confirm that it's a pika and not something else by the presence of pika scat right there. So those are pika pellets. They're about the size and shape of peppercorns and they you'll find them sort of littered throughout the hay pile in addition to in latrine sites that have white urine smears like this here um, near the hay pile. Finally, one other behavior that you can use to distinguish pikas from other small mammals that you might see is that pikas typically do not stand on their hind feet and handle food with their front feet. Instead, they may perch up on their front feet on a rock in order to access food, but unlike squirrels and chipmunks, they won't sit there and consume food that they're holding in their front feet. And so that's another good rule of thumb for being able to tell whether you saw a pika or some species of squirrel. One other important aspect of identifying pikas is being able to distinguish them both by sight and by calls from other species that you might encounter. As I previously mentioned, pikas don't have a visible tail, which means that if you see an animal running across the talus with its tail in the air, it's most likely that you saw either a chipmunk, a golden mantled ground squirrel, or a Douglas squirrel. 
Douglas squirrels are about the same size as pikas, but they have a more reddish underbelly and they tend to be more brown colored. In addition, they have a large fluffy tail. Douglas squirrels also frequently climb trees and pikas do not climb trees. So if you see an animal in a tree, it's definitely not a pika. Douglas squirrels also call and you might mistake their calls for pikas. However, they have a large vocal repertoire and they oftentimes intermix different kinds of calls. In addition, they can call for a long time. I've literally listened to Douglas squirrels call for over an hour at a time. You might also see chipmunks. Chipmunks are a little bit smaller than pikas, and the species of chipmunks that are most common in the Pacific Northwest typically run across the talus with their tail at about a 45 degree angle. So again, the tail can be a really key indicator that you're not seeing a pika. Finally, in pika habitat in the Pacific Northwest, you might also see marmots, and marmots are much larger than pikas. They're about the size of a small house cat, and their call is a little bit more of a chirp and a little less of an eep. You might also see and hear birds um, in pika habitat in the Pacific Northwest. And while it's very easy to distinguish a bird from a pika if you're able to see it, sometimes their calls can be a little bit confusing. I'm gonna play for you a couple of calls. The nuthatch that you might hear tends to have a lower pitch. And if you listen carefully to the nuthatch call, it lacks the descending notes of the pika call at the end. You might also hear an Oregon junco or a yellow rumped warbler. So now that we've covered all of the different species that you might see or hear on the talus when you're looking for pikas, we are going to offer you this short self quiz opportunity. What I recommend that you do is try to answer the questions on the quiz on your own, and then we'll share the answers with you so that you can check and see whether you were right. That's number one. That was number two. Here's number Number four. Number five. You can self check here, honor system. If you have trouble identifying these, you can go back and watch the video or watch some more pika videos online. The ones circled in red are the pikas. And then our pika calls were three and four. Thank you so much for watching this video and for your attention to detail while doing pika surveys, either through Cascades Pika Watch or through another citizen science organization. Have a great time.